<clears throat> According to a researcher at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. The rest can be a total mess and you can still read it without problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. Okay, so this was an internet meme distributed around 2003, and I realize I'm a little late to the party, but this is a party that's worth being late to. Also, you can tell I'm late to the party because in 2003 this was distributed via email. <laughs> so first off, these words with their first and last letter the same, but the inside jumbled, are known as typoglycemia, which is a combination of the words typo and glycemia, a medical emergency you experience when your blood doesn't have enough glucose. Yeah, I'm not sure why glycemia was thrown in there. But the fact that we can read a type of glycemia is what's really cool. I mean, the letters are all jumbled up and everything. But unfortunately, this email meme isn't entirely true. So, for starters, this didn't even come from a researcher at Cambridge University. In fact, the first understanding of this phenomenon came from Dr. Graham Rowlandson's thesis paper back in 1976, and he said that when you kept the first and last two letters intact, it didn't noticeably slow down readers. And according to cognitive scientist Matt Davis, who happens to actually be employed by Cambridge University, the specific way in which those mixed up words were jumbled made them easier to read for us. In the email meme, many of the letters still stayed in their same half of the word. When they were switched, they were only switched with a letter next to them instead of one farther away. And the words tended to spell out a word that sounded similar to the real spelling, like total instead of total. And applying Davis's conditions, we can actually change the difficulty of any type of glycemia. The words in the meme aren't too difficult to read because they're not rearranged in such a way that is that difficult. But now let's look at a sentence with the conditions Matt Davis suggests. That's much more difficult to read, right? I wasn't able to read it my first time through. So it's kind of apparent that we can't exactly read a total mess. It's also worth noting in this original meme that over 46% of the letters were just one, two, or three letter words, meaning that they weren't changed at all by the scrambling rules. Having half the words still exactly the same facilitated the reading greatly. But I believe the final nail in this coffin is that there was a study conducted to see how quickly people read these type of glycemia words, and it was found that they read them 11% slower. Now, 11% isn't exactly a humongous amount, but it shows the meme is not entirely true. But look, it's still pretty cool that we can read these type of glycemia words, right? Despite what Hooked on Pahonics might have you think, reading is much more than just combining individual letters to form words. And if that were true, then this meme would be read as Aktrnig to a research at Kmabrigdi Univ- This is ridiculous. You see, in addition to individual letters, we also understand large parts of language through context and meaning. So here's another example. What is this word? Maybe you got it, maybe you didn't, but I'm sure you'll get it when we add these other ones. Now it's sentence. With context, we can better understand, or at least guess, what word might make sense there, even when we're not presented with something that's 100% clear. And you know what else really helps facilitate context? Those one, two, three letter words, which will never change in a type of glycemia. But there's even more fun stuff to look at, because our contextual understanding of language isn't just limited to written language. It also helps explain why we sometimes do this. Hey Matt, you ready to go? What? Oh yeah, yeah, let's go. All right Matt, why do you always do this? You say why and you clearly hurt me. Actually, that's pretty normal. I didn't understand what you'd said, so my gut reaction was to say, what? But while that was happening, my brain was actively working to interpret what you had said, like reading scrambled up letters. So after only a few seconds, I was able to figure it out and respond. What is going on? This doesn't happen because we're choosing not to hear you or to piss you off and respond later. It's just human nature. But let's go back to written language for a second, because not only are our minds good at understanding context, they're so practiced at reading that it happens automatically. And a great example of this is the Stroop interference effect. Matt, what's the Stroop interference effect? Well, I'm glad I pretended you asked. Actually, before we go, I found this cool trick I wanna show you and see if you can do. So here's a piece of paper and just try to read the color of the ink the word is written in, okay? Okay. Read it as fast as you can, one, two, three, go. Blue, brown, white, red, orange, purple, pink, green, black, gray. Okay, sweet. Now I just want you to try it again. Say the color of the words, not the word, all right? Okay. Go. Brown, white, purple, blue, orange, red, pink, gray, black, green. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Reading is such an ingrained process in our mind that we just can't turn it off even when we actively try to. Which is why when we're only trying to see the color of those colors, we can't help but reading them and that creates interference. The Stroop interference. Effect. This effect was discovered by English psychologist John Ridley Stroop, who published a paper on it in 1935. Though there was actually a paper published in Germany in 1929 that said the exact same thing, so somehow that just 
no one cared about that one. Now, there are a couple other theories why the Stroop effect might occur, namely that words are read faster than colors can be identified, and identifying color needs more attention than words. But that still draws on the fact that words are identified and read by us without trying to. In fact, the test found that when words were color neutral, like truck or table, people were able to name the colors very easily. And if you want, you can click here to see my friends and me doing these fun tests I've been talking about. Okay, so there are two takeaways from all this. One, if you say something to someone and they respond immediately with what, wait a couple seconds, and see if they get the context. When that happens, it is so satisfying. And two, there are some cognitive tasks like language interpretation that are so deeply ingrained in our brain, we can't not do them. We excel at them to an amazing point and it often helps us, but it can hinder us. Though frankly, if someone is trying to tell you that your brain power is below average because you can't do well on a Stroop interference test, then they're probably the one with the below average brain power. I'm gonna bet you all have some funny experiences with this, so tell me in the comments and I'll see you later. Thanks. Doctor League to a church at Kamabrit, but Kamabrit Jude, un erv z it deos nte mater 